Let's talk about how to core aerate a lawn today. There's a few different ways to do it. The most traditional way of doing it is grabbing a manual core aerator. There are a variety of manual core aerators. I use the Yard Butler. It's got two cores, two prongs. They're about half inch cores. I find that that's really easy for me to be able to plunge core after core after core and go for a long time without getting tired. I've gotten accustomed to understanding the soil moisture level in my lawn because when the moisture level is too wet, the manual core aerators don't work very well. And when it's too dry, they don't work very well as well. You're also gonna find that if you have sandier soil, that the consistency of your soil is going to impact your ability to use a manual core aerator. Loose, sandy soils, in some cases, don't even really need to be aerated the same way that dense soils with a lot of clay in them do. The more modern ways of aerating a lawn have to do with using a mechanical core aerator or a liquid aeration product of some kind that gets sprayed onto the lawn. A mechanical core aerator is basically the same thing as a manual core aerator. The only difference is the cores are a little bit wider, they're a little bit bigger, and in some cases they go a little bit deeper. They're actually better cores and it's much easier to cover an entire lawn space with a mechanical core aerator. The problem is they are very expensive to buy, they are enormously heavy, and usually you need at least a couple people to get the job done. So although you could do a very large lawn in just an afternoon, it's a very hard and time-consuming job. And if you hire it out, it can get kind of pricey. The liquid aeration products that are on the market only go part of the way. They do make it very easy to aerate a lawn. However, they don't truly aerate the lawn the way traditional spike and core aerators do. You're going to get a little bit of soil softening and you're going to be able to open up some areas within the soil for a more aerobic environment, which is going to be beneficial for the soil bacteria and the microbes that we want living in our lawn. The liquid aeration products are typically going to add a little bit of potassium to the lawn, which is helpful, and almost every single one of them is gonna add humates to the lawn in the form of humic and fulvic acids. These things are going to spur biological life in your lawn and the biology that really gets going because of the application. It's gonna help the soil particles kind of loosen up a little bit. Now, the last main way of aerating your lawn is using a spike. Frequently, you'll see people using a pitchfork and they'll take the pitchfork and they'll jam it into the ground. They're either like pound the ground or they're like plug it in with their feet. But the point being is they are poking holes in the lawn with the pitchfork. Now the pitchfork or any kind of spike aerator, they're not pulling plugs. So they're not removing material from the lawn space. So they are not alleviating compaction the way that core aeration does. Liquid aeration does not alleviate compaction either, but it will add to the softening of the soil. When it comes to spike aeration, you are introducing channels for air and water to flow deeper into the soil profile, but you're not removing material, so you're not actually improving soil compaction. In fact, you're making compacted, more compacted soil in certain areas and opening up channels in the other. Now, there are some benefits to all of these methods, but the overarching thing that you need to keep in mind is that the best time to do any aeration is at the very end of winter going into spring and at the very end of summer going into fall. Both of these times are when our grass are wanting to put on new root development. So if we can open up channels, even if they are temporary channels, then those are areas where a grass can put new root growth into void spaces. Eventually those cores or channels close up on them and you end up with deeper, more substantial root systems. In the meantime, you're introducing additional airflow into the subsoil, which is gonna allow the bacteria and the microorganisms that rely on aerobic environments. They need oxygen to survive and to thrive. It's going to give them what they need so that they're gonna be able to break down organic matter in your lawn and release nutrients for your grass. Now I could go deep into the why. Why do we do this? Why is this important? But I'm gonna save that for another video. I have a lot of other videos on aeration and why we do it. I'm gonna to link to some of those down in the description below, but I'm gonna assume that you want to aerate your lawn. So when you aerate your lawn, if you're doing a core aeration, you wanna shoot for a lot of cores. Don't go lazy. You wanna go about 24 cores per square foot. If you're doing it manually, it's gonna take a good amount of time. 
if you're gonna be doing it mechanically, then you're going to have to do multiple passes with the big heavy machine. I personally endorse using liquid aeration products in addition to doing manual or mechanical core aeration. Spike aeration has its benefits, but I think that if you're gonna take the time to walk the lawn and poke a bunch of holes, you might as well be poking cores because it's gonna be better for your lawn in the long run. Another couple things to keep in mind when you aerate, it is helpful to have your grass a little bit short. It's helpful to remove as much surface debris off of your lawn as possible before you aerate. It is also extremely helpful to soften the soil with water or a surfactant or some sort of liquid aeration product in advance of core aerating. When your soil is extremely hard and compacted and then you go to core aerate, your cores are simply not going to be as deep and reliable. At the end of winter, it's actually fairly easy to have soft enough soil to pull good cores. But at the end of summer, you do have to take a few extra steps to ensure the cores that you do pull are going to benefit you as much as possible. To piggyback on that benefit you as much as possible, core aerating is hard. No matter how you do it, it's simply a hard job and most people want to do it but never get around to doing it. If you finally do take the step to do a core aeration on your lawn, don't waste the opportunity. There are really special things that you can do to your lawn immediately following core aeration that are very hard to incorporate into a lawn in any other scenario at any other time during the year. I have a video linked right up here about what to do immediately after core aeration and I strongly suggest that you give it a watch. If you're going to go through the trouble of aerating, at least take advantage of the opportunity that you have to do these things.